Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar on how to install buffalo grass and blue grama grass. My name is Katherine Moravec and I work as a senior water conservation specialist with Colorado Springs Utilities. So here's what we'll be covering in the webinar today. First of all, we'll talk about design options. Next, buffalo grass characteristics. Third, blue grama grass characteristics. Fourth, we'll spend some good amount of time on how to convert to these grasses. And then fifth, we'll touch on long-term maintenance. So let's first talk about design options. Native grasses can be used in a variety of ways, but the first option is to just simply um, plant them in areas where you would normally plant a traditional turf grass. So a front yard, a backyard lawn area, you could use these native grasses as you would um, a traditional lawn grass if you've got the right growing conditions and the right intended use. Another option is what we call a turf grass reduction. A turf grass reduction is simply where you have a large area covered by traditional turf grass that you'd like to um, reduce. So you keep a small area of your traditional lawn and then in the areas where you took out the grass, you would install blue grama grass or um, buffalo grass in those areas. Another option is to use these grasses in naturalistic landscapes. So if you have an area that transitions into open space or you're just looking for a more informal look, both buffalo grass and blue grama grass can be great options. Keep in mind that you can always use more than one type of grass in your landscape. So in this example, we used buffalo grass in the front lawn because it's more of a moderate traffic tolerance type of grass. And then we've installed Kentucky bluegrass in the backyard because it has a higher traffic tolerance than either buffalo grass or blue grama. So let's talk briefly about buffalo grass's characteristics so you can determine if it's a good match for you. Buffalo grass is a native grass that is commonly found on the eastern plains of Colorado. It typically grows in areas where there's some clay content in the soil. Now it will grow in those treeless plains, so buffalo grass does require full sun but um, can be used with significant water savings in the landscape. Rather than watering a traditional lawn three times a week, buffalo grass can be watered once per week and look very nice or even less. Buffalo grass is quite a short grass. It only grows to about three to six inches tall. So it can be a really good option if you want to do a lawn replacement or just plant an, a lawn area with buffalo grass. Uh, because it only grows to about three to six inches tall, you can significantly reduce your mowing. Um, buffalo grass can be mowed as little as one to three times per summer. Buffalo grass does have runners that go across the ground, across the soil surface. And because it's got these runners, those runners have the ability to fill in any bare areas of soil. So buffalo grass can be used in medium traffic um, areas. Buffalo grass really only works in the Colorado Springs area up to about 6,800 feet in elevation. Once you get above that, buffalo grass really just doesn't have a long enough growing, growing season to be a good addition to a landscape. Buffalo grass definitely has a lighter green color than a traditional lawn, but this can be a really nice asset for Colorado landscapes. It is green from mid-May to the beginning of October, um, so keep that in mind when you're considering it as an alternative. Buffalo grass um, has this shorter green period because it's a warm season grass. Traditional long grasses are cool season grasses, meaning they grow best in the cool weather of spring and fall. Now, buffalo grass and blue grama grass are different in that they grow best during the hot season of June, July, and August. So in this photograph taken on October 7th, you can see that the Kentucky bluegrass in the back of the picture is green and growing, while the, the buffalo grass in the foreground of the picture is um, starting to go dormant. Buffalo grass can be a really great option for many Colorado Springs landscapes. However, it's not a good match for your site if you have a need for high traffic tolerance, if your site's location is above 6,800 feet in elevation, if your landscape receives less than six hours of sun per day, or if the sun is very sandy. In these um, types of situations, buffalo grass just really won't perform very well for you and you'd be better suited using a different type of grass. So let's move on to blue grama grass characteristics. Blue grama grass, once again, is a native grass that grows throughout Colorado. And unlike buffalo grass, it grows on a wide variety of soils, including sandy or rocky soils. 
It also grows on the treeless plains, so it does require a full sun. Um, the blades of blue grama grass are a little bit taller, about six to 18, 18 inches tall, and you can water blue grama grass in the landscape once per week or less, just like buffalo grass. So there is significant water savings with blue grama grass as well. Blue grama grass will um, produce its leaves throughout the spring and midsummer, and then it will start to produce these seed heads in August. They um, rise above the blades of the grass and look like little eyelashes. Some people really like the look of the seed heads and you can keep them in place all winter, or you can mow them off if you don't like the way they look. Blue grama grass has a really light blonde yellow color in winter, um, but it does need to be mowed less often than a traditional lawn. It's best to leave it a little longer. So you can uh, mow it as little as once in the month of February just to remove all the dead material, or you can mow it up to once per month if you like it a little bit more neat and tidy looking. Blue grama grass, just like buffalo grass, is a little bit lighter green in color, has a very similar green period from mid-May to early October, just like buffalo grass because it is a warm season grass. Um, but blue grama grass can work at higher elevations. It is used in landscapes up to about 7,500 feet in Colorado and still performs very well. Blue grama grass, because it needs to be left a little bit longer, um, is a really good match for naturalistic landscapes, informal designs, very hot, dry, sunny areas. It's a great um, grass to use in those types of landscapes. The reason why you need to leave it a little bit longer is that if you mow it short on a regular basis, you'll get a lot of weeds invading the grass area. Blue grama grass is best used in low traffic areas. Because it's a bunch grass, it doesn't have the ability to fill in any areas where the grass is damaged. So it's best to use it in areas where you don't have consistent foot traffic from kids or dogs in that location. But it can make a really good grass um, for large low use areas. Because it has a relatively low mowing requirement and low water requirement, it can be a great addition to large landscapes that just need something covering the soil. Because of the way that blue grama grass naturally grows, don't use it in your landscape if you need a grass area with a lot of um, foot traffic tolerance, if your elevation is above 7,500 feet, or if you have less than six hours of sun per day. If you have those site characteristics, a different grass will be a better match for you. So now let's talk about how you can install buffalo grass or blue grama in your landscape. Now this is a little bit different than how you might install traditional sod because you need to install buffalo grass or blue grama from seed or plugs. So let's talk about how to do that successfully in the Colorado Springs area. These are the eight steps that we use to install buffalo grass and blue grama. Here they are. First, we'll talk about removing existing grass and weeds. We'll talk about rototilling or core aerating. Then third, raking the soil surface smooth. Fourth, making sure you have an establishment watering permit to be able to water your new seed or plugs. We'll talk about planting. Then we'll talk about the watering schedule, how to fertilize and how to control weeds so that your project is successful. The first thing you need to do is just plan the schedule of your project so you'll be successful. Sometime in May is a good time to start removing your vegetation if you're dealing with an existing landscape because the best planting window for buffalo grass and blue grama is sometime between June 1st to August 15th. Because these are warm season grasses, you'll want to plant your seed or your plugs um, in that window of time because they will germinate and start to grow new roots while the air temperature and the soil temperature are warm in midsummer. So let's talk about step one, removing existing grass and weeds. This is a very important step. If you have a landscape that looks like this, it can be really tempting to plant your seed or your plugs into this existing bare area, but that is generally not a successful approach you need to go ahead and remove any existing grass and weeds um, so that you can give your buffalo grass or blue grama a great planting site so it will grow successfully. 
Now there are four different ways that you can remove existing grass and weeds from your landscape. You can cover the area with cardboard and mulch, let that sit for a few months, remove it, and then rototill that um, dead grass into the soil. You might do the same type of method with um, light blocking tarps. Both of those methods rely on shading out the existing grass and weeds. So they do need a couple months to be successful in killing everything that's existing there. You can also um, use an herbicide to um, kill existing grass and weeds. That's certainly an option that people use. Or if you uh, want to, you can use a sod cutter to remove um, the existing grass and weeds. Just be aware that a sod cutter um, sometimes will leave some um, uh, bits of grass and weeds that might get into your new stand of buffalo grass and blue grama. So make sure that you thoroughly use the sod cutter if you're gonna employ that method. We do have a fact sheet on vegetation removal available at csu.org. So please be sure to check this out if you'd like more information on this topic. So now let's move on to step two, which is rototilling or core aerating the area. Now, if your existing grass was growing well, then you can possibly mow that dead material very short, heavily core aerate the area and plant into the dead grass. That is an option that can work really well. And there is a fact sheet from Colorado State University Extension on native lawns that outlines this process. If you're able to use this process, the benefit is that you will greatly reduce the amount of weeds that you get in your new grass. And this is because um, if you're seeding the area, then the seeds will drop into those core aeration holes and then fill in the area over time. The process is very similar with planting plugs, so this can be a good option. So if you have an existing lawn that looks like the picture on the left, then using the core aeration option is um, certainly a good way to go. But if, however, you have um, an existing area that looks more like the picture on the right of the screen with weeds and grass that may not be thriving very well, then I would certainly recommend that you remove that existing grass and weeds and then rototill the area to break up any soil compaction that may be present. So if you're going to rototill, then what you would do is get a rototiller machine, go through the area once the vegetation is removed or dead, um, and just mix any dead weeds and grass into the soil. Typically with our native grasses, we do not need to add compost to the soil because they're adapted to grow really well in our existing soils. So there's no need to add any special products to the soil, but it's certainly okay to mix in any dead grass or weeds that are already present in the area. The next step is to rake the surface of the soil nice and smooth. This is when you have the opportunity to fine tune the final soil grade. So you wanna make sure that the soil level next to your sidewalks and next to your edging or next to any pathways is where you'd like that final soil level to be. So it's a good time to move that soil around and get it just right. Now, once you do that, if your soil um, is very light and fluffy, it may be a good idea to use a roller to firm that seed bed up if necessary. If the soil is not extremely light and fluffy, then you can just go ahead and seed or plant into the soil once you've got it raked smooth. The next step is to get an establishment watering permit. An establishment watering permit is what you need to be able to water more than three days per week and during the day. Now you'll need to water very frequently to get your new seed to germinate or your plugs to grow new roots. So you need to go ahead and get this permit in place before you plant so that you can start watering your new seed or your new plugs right away. Now, if you're planting buffalo grass or blue grama grass, both of those are native grasses. Um, you'll want to submit a receipt that shows what type of seed that you purchased and if you do that, then you don't have to show proof of amending the soil or mixing compost into the soil. So instead of uh, showing proof of improving the soil, you can instead just show proof that you purchased a native grass. 
If you're doing a seeding project, then your establishment permit will be valid for 42 days. If you're planting plugs instead, then your establishment permit will be valid for 28 days. And in both of these cases, this should be a sufficient amount of time to be able to water frequently, get that seed up and germinated or your plugs starting to grow. And then you can move back to three days per week of watering once your establishment permit expires. You can apply for an establishment permit online at our website at csu.org. And if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call or email us at the contact information below. The next step is to plant your seeds or your plugs. Now, if you're installing buffalo grass, you can install it through plugs, sod, or seed. If you're installing blue grama grass, then your only option is to plant seed. So let's talk a little bit about buffalo grass plugs. Buffalo grass plugs are just small plants of buffalo grass that are grown in these plug trays and you mail order them um, from a production nursery. If you have any questions about where to purchase buffalo grass plugs, please contact us and we'll help you identify a supplier. So once you separate those plugs from the trays, you end up with these small individual plants that have um, a bunch of leaves and then a good established root system in that plug. Once you have the area prepared, then you can plant your buffalo grass plugs 12 to 18 inches apart. Both Legacy and Prestige are cultivars that work really well in the Colorado Springs area. If you're looking to install a really nice turf grass area for a lawn replacement, then you might want to take a look at using Legacy or Prestige. These are two cultivars that have been proven to work really well in Colorado Springs, and they look really nice. Buffalo grass um, is a type of grass that has both male and female plants, and the male plants will send up um, a seed head that has pollen on it, and those will be above the leaves of the grass. Now, the nice thing about these buffalo grass plugs is they're only um, comprised of female plants, meaning you won't get in any of those seed heads um, appearing throughout the summer, and it can just look a little bit more uniform and tidy. Buffalo grass is sometimes commercially available in Colorado, but it is expensive. It can be very difficult to find from a supplier. And because they have to cut a little bit thicker profile of sod, it can be very challenging to transport because it's so heavy. So oftentimes we'll find in Colorado that buffalo grass sod is just not currently available for sale. You can also install buffalo grass from seed. When you go out to purchase buffalo grass seed, you'll find that there are different cultivars available for sale. Some of these are good for rangeland applications um, because they're very hardy and very drought tolerant, but there are some types of buffalo grass that are better suited to landscapes, and these are traditionally the turf grass cultivars. The most common turf grass cultivar available for sale is called Sundancer. So if you're buying seed, this would be one that we would certainly recommend. If you're buying blue grama grass, you're gonna find the same thing, multiple cultivars for sale. Um, and Hachita is one that we've been very happy with at the WaterWise Demonstration Garden. If you're installing your grass from seed, June 1st through August 15th is a really great time to plant that seed, but the ideal window is really late June to mid-July because you will get really quick seed germination once the soil is nice and warm. Plan to plant about three pounds of seed per thousand square feet, and that'll give you a really good seeding rate for a landscaped area. Now you can plant either buffalo grass or blue grama, or you can mix the two grass seeds together to get the height of the blue grama and the traffic tolerance of the buffalo grass. So in this photograph, this is a mixture of buffalo grass and blue grama, and you can mow this short or you can leave it tall and naturalistic. Often um, over a period of time, you'll get one grass sort of performing better than the other, but it can be a really good way to go if you're not sure exactly which grass you'd like to use in your landscape. So when you're ready to seed, go ahead and spread that seed over the soil surface. And I just typically do it by hand. I don't use a spreader because it can be hard to get native grass seed to get to drop through a spreader. Um, make sure you're spreading that seed over bare soil and not into dead grass 
thatch or weeds because that seeds need that seed needs really good contact with soil in order to germinate successfully. Once you've spread your seed over the area, then go ahead and rake that seed into the soil just to get it mixed down a little bit, and then you can begin your watering schedule. So step six is water to establish your new cedar plugs. Regular watering is key to a successful project. Many of the projects where they don't have irrigation just don't get the seed germination or the new root growth to really fill in the area. If you don't have an in-ground irrigation system, then you might wanna consider installing temporary irrigation as an option to get water over that area. Plan to water um, for at least two growing seasons, and then you can determine how often you wanna water your buffalo grass or blue grama. You can water it as frequently as up to once per week, or you can water it only during extended dry periods. Here's the establishment watering schedule that we have been very successful with. Um, and you'll see that in this schedule, you start watering very frequently in the very beginning for short periods of time. And then you increase the amount of time you're watering, but water less frequently per week. So um, right after you seed for weeks one and two, we would recommend running your um, sprinkler system for just a short period, five minutes at a time, two to three times per day. And I've had very good luck with watering on a schedule of 9 a.m., 1 p.m., and 5 p.m. So that can be a good place to start, and you can uh, water a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on how the site conditions are. You wanna keep the surface of the soil moist, but definitely not waterlogged, or if you're seeing any puddling occurring, that's watering too much. So go ahead and work your way through this schedule as your project progresses, and this will definitely help you be successful with your new seed and new plugs. Step seven is to fertilize for rapid growth. Once your seed is up and germinated or your plugs start to grow, it may look pretty sparse with some bare areas in between. If you'd like to get your grass to fill in faster, you can certainly use just a standard lawn fertilizer to promote rapid growth. Our turf grass specialist with Colorado State University Extension has been very successful with fertilizing buffalo grass. He recommends that you can apply up to half the recommended rate of fertilizer on the bag or a half a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet up to once per week. And then within a few months, you'll have really good grass coverage over the area. The eighth step is to control any weeds. If you're planting plugs, you can use a pre-emergent herbicide to cut down on the amount of new weeds that are growing in between those small plants until they fill in. Don't use a traditional uh, pre-emergent product with buffalo grass because it may damage it. Instead, use a product called Barricade and that is labeled as safe for buffalo grass. Um, pre-emergent herbicides are generally not necessary for sod. If you are seeding an area, then post-emergent weed killers will be important for your project. You can use any of the products listed in this slide. They're labeled as safe on both buffalo grass and blue grama and have been proven to work really well in the Colorado Springs area. Now, if you have the ability to hand weed your area because it's relatively small, that can also be an option instead of using um, weed control products. By using these eight steps that I've just covered, you can greatly increase the chance that your project will be successful. So now let's move on to long-term maintenance. How do you take care of buffalo grass or blue grama over the long term? So with fertilization, rather than fertilizing a traditional lawn three times per year, you can fertilize buffalo grass and blue grama just once per year. Do it in July when it's in its peak growth period and apply about one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. So we've touched on watering throughout the presentation, but I'll just summarize it for you here. Start watering your buffalo grass or blue grama lawn only after it starts to green up in May. Don't water it before that or during the winter because you'll just encourage weeds. Every time that you irrigate it, um, apply at least one half inch of water. So run your sprinklers long enough to put down that depth of water. If you're not sure how long to run your sprinklers, just simply put out a few cans or cups and run your sprinklers long enough to collect about a half an inch on average in those containers. You can water it up to once per week, um, but in the cool weather of spring and fall, you might water it 
maybe once every 14 days or even less. If you choose not to irrigate your buffalo grass or blue grama grass, then it will be green when we get precipitation from mother nature. And then in extended dry periods, it will be brown and dormant, but it will come out of dormancy once moisture returns. The nice thing about buffalo grass and blue grama is they don't require any winter watering. So now let's talk about mowing. You can mow both of these grasses when they get about three inches tall or taller. You can leave them tall throughout the growing season and just mow them once in February to remove the dead material. Or you can mow them more often up to once per month throughout the growing season. I just want to point out that blue grama may get a lot of weeds if you mow it too often and water it too much. So let blue grama get a little bit taller um, and you'll be very happy with it. Before you make your final decision on installing buffalo grass or blue grama grass, you might want to come and see what it looks like in person. You can certainly do that at our WaterWise demonstration garden located at 2855 Mesa Road. It's free and open to the public during daylight hours any day of the year. You can always come and take a look at these grasses in person at the demonstration garden to see if they're going to be a good fit for you. So thanks for viewing this webinar and we wish you the best of success with your buffalo grass or blue grama project.